welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show with barefaced lies and well-masked truths. On David Mitchell's team tonight, straight out of Crawley, it's comedian Ramesh Ranganathan. <laughs> and she is the BAFTA-winning star of all your favourite sitcoms. It's Jessica Hines. On Lee Maxine tonight, the British comic who's conquered America. It's Gina Yashere. <laughs> and a man who knows all about telling lies on television from the traitors, it's Wilfred Webster. <laughs> we begin with round one home truths, where our panelists read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before. They've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. And Jessica is first up tonight. OK. My first ever voiceover job was making extra pig, sheep and horse noises for a documentary about a Yorkshire farm. <laughs> <laughs> I need an example. <laughs> Straight in there. So sorry. Sorry. Okay. Let's hear them. Well, let's start with the pig. <laughs> We're jumping in. Let's, let's have Sorry. a little bit of context. All right, then. Uh, when was it? <laughs> 90... Whatever. 90, Do 93. <laughs> OK, first of all, did you say it was a documentary? Yeah, documentary about uh, a Yorkshire farm. Was there a strike on with the pigs and the cows at the time? <laughs> why didn't they provide the noises? I can't <laughs> tell you why. All I can tell you is, for some reason, the sound was not good. Right. And they didn't know what to do, so... Before you came into the studio, did oh, they yeah. say, do you have any expertise in animal noises? <laughs> she asked me if I would do it, and because I wasn't doing any acting work, I was like, yes. But it's a risk to ask you to turn up on the hope that you can do it. Most I mean, people can do a pig or a sheep. Like, on, yes. It's hardly turning you into Jim Rob, Carey. Rob, the it? one thing I've learned about you is if you could impersonate it, you'd have done it. <laughs> <laughs> and I've never heard you do a pig or a sheep or whatever the other one was. I wonder how it would be if, if we went Ronnie down Corbett... to the farm and we found Ronnie Corbett. <laughs> <laughs> well, what a wonderful surprise. <laughs> Pigs and sheep are plenty. <laughs> <laughs> Were they directing you? Were they like, can you give it a bit more piglet? Yeah, like, well, they... sort of, but it was more like trying to match what the animals were doing in vision with sound that they didn't have. So it's kind of like... <laughs> sort of snuff. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Okay. Oh, hey. uh -huh. That is good. That is good. OK. Right. Now, let's see the sheep. Some people think a sheep is just meh, but it isn't. It's meh. Or, you know, that's a sheep. Sheep Mah! noises begin Mah! with a B, famously. Yeah. There's a no, song no, about that, it. You say, <laughs> do you know why you say that? Because you're English, you see, and because I'm half partially sheep? Welsh in my heritage. Oh, you are half sheep. I, 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 <laughs> I, <laughs> Rob, it's true. Back me up here. I don't think they agree with you, sir. That was a great. Yeah. The sheep is just uh, just looking round on a lovely summer's day. What's he do? Um, well, just be, probably be quiet. I would say. All right, but he's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good point. <laughs> but the noise that I had the most um, difficulty with was horse, and so that's when I was just really fudging it. Like, so they asked you if you could do a horse. Yeah. Did you say nay? And they went. <laughs> Well, that's absolutely perfect. Coming tomorrow. <laughs> so, Will, what do you think? Is she um, telling the truth? I, I think she's telling the truth. Wow. Do you? I'm not very. Listen, I was good at lying. I wasn't good at finding liars. I never had to do that, okay? Well, so, I don't know. Why I'll... did you accept the book in then, mate? <laughs> Gina. You know what? I believe her. Do you? I don't know why. I could feel the awkwardness coming over as she was telling the story. I mean, I mean she could be a really good actor. She has well, been excuse me. She, <laughs> we, 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 we know that she is. I'm so sorry, Gina. Gina. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No idea when we booked her that there would be that level of it. David consoled her. I'm so sorry. I'm going to lean. I'm going to lean truth. True. Uh, yeah. True. true. All right. My true. team say true. Okay. They're going for true. Uh, Jessica. Animal noises in the early days of your career. Truth or lie? Lie. Oh. <laughs> 
Yes, it's a lie. Jessica didn't make animal noises for a documentary. Uh, Gina, you're next. <clears throat> I once faked a school trip to fool my mum into letting me go to France. <laughs> David's team. So you faked a school trip? Faked a school trip. How? What did you say? Uh, my mother was extremely strict. Mm -hmm. Never let me go anywhere or do anything. I was 17. I wanted to go to France. I was studying A-level French. So I, I tricked her into thinking it was <laughs> imperative for me to go on this trip. I would have thought if it was an educational thing, most mums would be all for it, wouldn't they? That's the point she's just made. No. <laughs> <laughs> my mother was super overprotective of us. Right. Like, she didn't let us go anywhere. She had a scrapbook of bus and train crashes. <laughs> <laughs> that she'd bring out and go, you see these children? They went on their school trip and now they are dead. <laughs> Stuff like that. Wow. Was there actually a school trip? No, there was no school trip. I went on my own. But so, what, I... did you just tell your very strict fearful of death mother this is school trip and she went okay there's a school trip i basically got all my friends to turn up at the train station with suitcases <laughs> <You're not serious. laughs> to make it look like it was a school trip and they weren't going to france with you no and then wow. my mum came said goodbye <laughs> and then we all got on the train and they got off at the next stop <laughs> where did you go in france i went to um touraine to Touraine. Touraine which Why is... did you go to Touraine? Because there was a French course there, and the council gave free trips for kids who were studying A-levels. So you actually lied to your mum to go to France, but actually went to a French course? Yeah. So you didn't go clubbing or go out and do anything? You I actually did that. went and studied? I did that. I slept with a guy while I was there, but I did go... <laughs> But you also Initially did to a... study. So it was wow. part fun, part academic? Yeah. What year was this? I'm going to say the 80s. Because I was there in the 80s. Yeah. 80s, yeah. So how long was it? <laughs> <laughs> it's me! <laughs> wow! I remember you. I thought you were black. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking, Ronis? The way that Gina talks about her mum is the same way that I sort of, you know, Sri Lankan parenting is very, very similar. What I can't understand is how you wouldn't be just incredibly anxious, because if even there was the slimmest chance of your mum finding out, you would not be with us today. <laughs> no. What do you think, Jessica? I think it's a completely 100% true. Really? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, completely. David? Do you know what I liked? Touraine. Not Paris. No. It's not obvious, is it? Touraine. Who knows? But, yes, that's the sort of thing, a place in France... Yes, my town is twinned with Touraine. They've got a <laughs> biscuit factory. <laughs> um, I think it's true. You're going to say true? <gasps> Gina, Gina, uh, truth or lie? It is... True! <laughs> yes, it's true. Gina once did fake the school trip so she could go to France. Uh, Wilfred, you're up next. <laughs> Last year, I had to walk home from a swimming pool in my trunks after someone stole my clothes from the locker whilst I was in the water. Oh, <laughs> David's team. Uh, where was this swimming pool? In Cyprus. In Cyprus. You had to walk all the way home from Cyprus. <laughs> <laughs> So the swimming pool was where in Cyprus? So it was at our hotel, yeah. So it was from the hotel swimming pool to your room in the hotel? Yeah. The... <laughs> this is having a bit less of an anecdote. Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I was imagining a public swimming bath and you're walking three or four blocks, splash, 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 avoiding the dog poo. No. But now it's just in a holiday hotel yeah, yeah. from the pool to your room. That's what made it more awkward. Here. Yeah. How long did it take you to recover from the trauma? <laughs> How far was it from the pool to your suite? It wasn't that long at all. It was... I have to get in a lift, which was awkward. So, at this holiday hotel... Yeah. ..there were lockers. Yes. So you went down to the pool, <laughs> fully clothed, maybe in your... I don't know, your suit and tie from work. <laughs> Could you please describe your trunks for My us? My trunks? So, they yes. were... They were bright, bright, bright green. And were they mini or maxi? What? What does that I mean? I mean, were they budgie smugglers? Or trunks? Or... They were trunks, like... They were trunks. So, so what... they were swinging around? Well, they... 
<laughs> what? Once you flatter him. What's swinging around? What's the they in question? It's definitely not swinging around. Were they swinging around? Just, 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 just. <laughs> Suddenly, it'll hit you in the face. <laughs> I mean, the material. Oh, oh well, I didn't have them, they were stolen. The, oh, the so you were. What, what did you have on your what bottom? What are you talking about? I didn't have them. You were in your trunks, you said. Yeah. So you did have them? Yeah. Right. They weren't stolen. They you... weren't stolen. <laughs> well, I think this is going great. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, quick, seriously, look at that, everybody. <laughs> Read it again. Read it again. <laughs> So you come back, you come back to the locker. Yeah. Your clothes have gone. Yeah. So this is a classy hotel. Yeah, Somebody yeah. has stolen your clothes. I've stolen them. Yeah. It's from the locker. Yes. <laughs> yes. As I went. Yeah. Do you think you maybe put your clothes in a different locker and you just oh, looked in the wrong locker? Are we actually investigating this? There's <laughs> 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 so so another no no possibility that none of this happened. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> that would explain why it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Did right. you ever get the clothes back? <laughs> Did never No. Never got. No. So you lost shoes, trousers, lost everything. <laughs> wow. oh, apart from the trousers. Or oh, other possibility. <laughs> it didn't happen. <laughs> he's, he's fine. Uh, all right, uh, Jessica. What, what do you think? <laughs> I think I think it's a lie. You think it's a lie? OK, because of what he said. Yes. Um, <laughs> Ramesh, you are dealing with a very good, duplicitous, untrustworthy man. Yeah, I mean, I think it's possible, based on what I've seen of you and your performance in The Traitors, that this is actually an incredible yeah. quadruple bluff. I think so, too. <laughs> but it would be... I mean, the amount of planning it would take, because the first thing you'd have to do is, in advance, persuade a five-star hotel in Cyprus to institute a system of lockers. <laughs> swimming gear, which is something much more common than municipal swimming baths. <laughs> so to make us look like whoever wrote the card very much had that kind of swimming in mind. <laughs> so that we would think it was a colossal mistake on your part to then say it was a hotel in Cyprus rather than a swimming bath in the UK. If you've done that, you deserve the point. Yes. <laughs> So I think you're saying it's a lie, am I right? At, at, at this point, on a balance of probabilities only. All right, I'd OK, so Wilfred, yeah. um, in your wet trunks, in the <laughs> yeah. lift, was it true or was it a lie? It was indeed a lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's double wrong. Yes, it's a lie. Wilfred didn't have to walk home in his swimming trunks. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. This week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest. It's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Kai. <laughs> so, Jessica, what is Kai to you? Um, this is Kai. And he painted my front door with 73 bottles of nail varnish. Ramesh, how do you know Kai? This is Kai. Um, he once told me off when I discussed his private parts on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, David, what is your relationship with Kai? Uh, this is Kai. Don't bother, David. You have never <laughs> met this man in your life. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> this is Kai, uh. and I had to borrow his fingers in order to order my Big Mac. <laughs> so there we have it. Jessica's paint pal, <laughs> Ramesh's mortified mate, or David's helping hand. Lee, where do you want to begin? Jessica, the obvious question is, what colour did you go for? <laughs> it was a kind of a sort of shiny blue. Shiny blue? Yeah. Kai is an amazing, like, decorator and lives in my town. Right. We were walking past this house, this amazing looking house, and there was a front door that looked like gorgeous, beautiful colour, really nice. And I knew that Kai lived there, but I hadn't actually properly met him. And then when I finally met him, I was like, my God, your door is so gorgeous. Did you... It's a hell of an opening line. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you didn't like his cat flap. Was... We... <laughs> 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 I was like, I couldn't believe it when he said, he said, it's nail varnish. I was like, 
really? He was like, yeah, yeah, it's nail varnish. And then I was thinking, is it rude of me, like, to be like, oh, my God, can you do that for my door? But that's what I did. <laughs> and how long did it take? He did it kind of over about four or five weekends. How did he apply it? It wasn't the little, the little <laughs> brush, was it? <laughs> Presumably... <laughs> you can't get a big paintbrush in those little bottles. <laughs> but you can decant... Get your roller in there, you never do it. The whole experience was unusual, obviously. Yeah. How many coats was it? It was only one coat. One coat? Yeah. One coat? It was undercoat. One. What was the undercoat? Normal paint? Just, like, a white undercoat, which we did. We did all the prep. Oh, and you because, prepped it all? Yeah, we prepped it. Tell me how you prep a door. Well, you just sand it and put paint on it. You've obviously never prepped a door. It's not, like, difficult. <laughs> yeah, have you prepped a door, Lee? Yeah. <laughs> how many bottles? I mean, ultimately, it worked out around 75, 73. I mean, it's pungent, isn't it? Did the, like, did the postman faint? I was a bit worried about that. <laughs> I was a bit worried about that, but because I'd sniffed his door... Had you? <laughs> right, Lee, who would you like to question next? OK, let's go over to Ramesh. Just Which remind us of the statement. Uh, Kai once told me off for discussing his private parts on a podcast. What's the podcast called? Uh, Wolf and Owl. OK, and who are the people on the podcast? M it's me and the other regular is Tom Davis. And what relation is Kai to you? Uh, Kai is somebody that goes to the same gym as me. Do you go on the days when it isn't open? <laughs> <laughs> and so you've obviously seen him walking around naked. No. Nope. Well, then, how did you know about his private parts? He showed me a picture. <laughs> where, where was he when he showed you his Wait, picture? Wait, hold on. Hang on. He shows you a picture <laughs> in the gym. The whole caboodle. The wait, whole wait, wait, wait. He's got a dog? <laughs> No, no, don't, don't blame me for that, please. <laughs> so, all right, how did this conversation come about? On this particular day, yeah. I, I noticed he was uh, just walking a bit funny. And I went up to him and I said, Are you right? When he said, I had a vasectomy yesterday. <laughs> and then he said, Do you want to see? <laughs> and you said yes. Well, I'm not saying it wasn't unusual. Right. It's not how most of my conversations go. <laughs> Did he show you before and after? He sh I saw a series of pictures. <laughs> <laughs> OK, and then how does this then end up on your podcast with Tom Davis? One of the things that we start off with is saying, you know, what we've been up to, and then I said, well, actually, just this morning, this thing happened, and I detailed the story. Mm -hmm. And did you paint Kai in a bad light? How there is... You... Listen, there's no way you can paint that guy in a bad light. I saw it, it made me want to write a poem about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, he was not happy that you had mentioned this for sex. No, it was his wife that was the, was the issue, because... Oh. ..she listens to the podcast. <gasps> and wow. so, she's a private person, I guess, and sort of didn't want me to see her. Wow. No, she's not a private person, she's a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say his name, then, in the podcast? No, I didn't. I yeah. wouldn't have done that. Do you think there's any chance she watches this programme? There's a, there's a chance, <laughs> yeah. she might not like that, either. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whereas what you say you didn't mention him by name, here you <laughs> have... <laughs> How long ago was the, all this? Like, a couple of months, not that long ago. It's obviously still very sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's been covering it up since he walked up. <laughs> now then, Lee, what about David? Remind us of your claim. I borrowed his fingers to help me order my Big Mac. OK. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know the answer to this, but just for the audience, what exactly is wrong with your fingers? <laughs> I don't know. I've always found them to be adequate. Maybe I was cold, but whatever it was, I couldn't get the thing. I was pressing and oh, pressing. Oh, this is the new thing they have, where you, you don't speak no, to no, a human. No, no, I was you... poking a member of staff. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a hamburger. Well, some people may not... Yeah. Uh, some and you're people so may not weak, know. you have to borrow somebody else's <laughs> yeah, exactly. fingers. Um, <laughs> no, I, yes, it was one of the new screens they have. Ah. And it wasn't happening for me. I, either I couldn't yeah. get it to go at all, or I, I'd do that and then it would be like I'd put five in there and I don't want five Big Macs. <laughs> <laughs> what time of day was this? It was late at night. Now, what was Kai doing? He was also in McDonald's. Yes, did you yeah. sort of approach him and go... <laughs> 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 Excuse me, <laughs> <laughs> 
problem with the fingers. <laughs> how, 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 no. how did it go? <laughs> Um, uh, uh, he was behind me in the queue for this. Yeah, what are you doing there? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm getting at yeah, is, well, yeah. did you get hold his fingers and do that with them, or did you just let him do it? I let him do it. <laughs> well, yeah, no, no, I, I fished his little fingers out of his pockets and poked away with them until he asked me kindly what I was doing. <laughs> The late night in McDonald's. No one, just me. <laughs> on your own? On my own. I'd been to an event. What and sort of event was it? Pub. It was a book launch. Whose book? A, a friend of mine's, but I'm not going to say whose book. Come on. I'm not going to say whose book. Why not? Because it was a very, very dirty book. No. <laughs> <laughs> and your fingers had become... <laughs> your fingers had become dysfunctional. <laughs> I went to the launch. <laughs> uh, and then I went to the pub with some people from the book launch. Right. And then after that, went I went to into McDonald's. McDonald's like I used to as a much, much, much younger man. But when I got into McDonald's, everything had changed. <laughs> <laughs> it was no longer possible to ask another human for a hamburger, <laughs> and it was necessary to log on to some sort of wall of food. <laughs> I did my best to do that, but something, something was wrong with my old, hungry, drunken fingers. <laughs> and the machine refused to give me anything. <laughs> what were you trying to order? A Big Mac. <laughs> I was also, full disclosure... I were also, you? I... <laughs> There's no verb. I also ordered... There's no verb! <laughs> This double action isn't working out, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was mortified by that. <laughs> you can't say, were you? Just, uh, I hadn't asserted any action. <laughs> uh, You've got this, odd... None of this makes any sense. <laughs> yes. All I also ordered some chips yeah. and a tea. Oh, it said chips, did it, on the thing? No, it said fries, right. but I still refer to them as chips yeah. in a desperate attempt to resist American cultural imperialism. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we need an answer. So, Lee's team, is Kai Jessica's paint pal, Ramesh's mortified mate, or David's helping hand? Right, well, first of all, let's look at Kai. He looks buff, doesn't he? Yeah. Buff. He He's looks up. like he goes to the gym a lot. Definitely. Painter yeah. and decorators are usually a bit more, let's say, flabby, shall we say. <laughs> but also, you must be very protective of that door. Like, if people knock on the door, just scream, use the doorbell and stuff like that. Are you like... Yeah. Are you I what? do. <laughs> <laughs> what else is the doorbell for? <laughs> Does your finger work on the doorbell? <laughs> <laughs> So what do you think, then, Lee? Who are you going to say this? I'm going to go Ramesh. Yeah. You say Ramesh? I'm, I'm thinking Ramesh, yeah. He's the kind of comic that would talk about that stuff on a podcast, wouldn't he? And yeah. Tom Davis definitely would. So I think we'll go Ramesh. Right. Uh, Kai, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Kai, and Ramesh discussed my private <laughs> past in the podcast. <laughs> Yes, Kai is Ramesh's mortified mate. Thank you very much, Kai. Legend, thank you. Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lives. And we start with... <coughs> it's Lee. Next week, I am due to appear before a disciplinary panel at my clay pigeon shooting club. <laughs> Accidentally shot the owner's wife in the knee. <laughs> David's team. <laughs> Where do you go clay pigeon shooting? Where I go to the local clay pigeon shooting club near me, and I'm not willing to give away where I live. Is it in the countryside, in a field? It's uh, in the countryside, in a field. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> how, often, how often do you meet? About four or five times a year. So once every two to three months? Uh, two and a half months. OK. <laughs> was, um, was the clay pigeon very low or was the wife's knee very high? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, the, the person who runs it, his wife has got two broken arms at the moment. <laughs> and uh, so she wasn't able to do any clay pigeon shooting that week. In a cast? Both in casts, like 
I didn't know that you went clay pigeon shooting. No, I never did I till about 30 seconds ago. <laughs> paint a picture of the incident itself. I can paint yes. a picture, but she can't. <laughs> Broken arms in the cast. Okay. <laughs> Forget all the bit about the broken arms. That wasn't true. Okay. okay. Her job, Betty the Puller, they call her. Betty the Puller. <laughs> Betty the Puller. Her job is when you say pull, because that's what you're doing clay pigeon shooting. You go pull, <laughs> and then pull, and the clay pigeons go off, and you. And the yeah. good thing about clay pigeon suit, you don't have to be that good. As long as you're in the rough area, the shot spreads. Yes. Yeah, so how could you hit her? She's at ground level. Because I was going. And then, on the third count of pull, I went pull, and I went... <laughs> Come on, Betty! <laughs> Boom! Get up! <laughs> you Shot didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I mean, I did. <laughs> I went like that, and then pull! Oh, come on, Betty. I'll do it in slow motion. <laughs> come on, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, How did Betty react? Oh, well, I'll tell you what, she hasn't pulled for a while. <laughs> <laughs> David, what are you thinking? Let's for a moment imagine that this is true. <laughs> is, well, it to. is it? <laughs> <laughs> if, if this were true, is it something that <laughs> Lee or the clay pigeon shooting community would be happy <laughs> to have yeah. discussed in this forum? <laughs> Ask me anything about clay pigeon shooting. Ask me. Bring it on. How long does it take? How long does it take? Yeah. Well, it takes as long as you want to do. <laughs> I've, I've, been known, <laughs> I've been known to do up to four hours in one session. I've also been known to do less than three minutes because, and I don't know if I've mentioned it... You shot this, someone in the knee? shot someone in the leg. <laughs> so yeah. How is Betty now? What oh, state is Betty, she? Oh, Betty, we laugh about it now. Right. In fact, I've really made her sort of come round to my way of thinking that it's just a humorous event. She's actually going to support me on the panel next week. <laughs> but the husband is very much in the prosecution camp. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the shot went right in his crotch. <laughs> Because there's nothing left of his tackle and he showed me a photograph. <laughs> <laughs> All right. David, um, I, I think I know what you're going to say, but uh, truth or lie? Well, yeah, lie? Lie. No, it's a lie. lie. Yes, sir. Yeah, think, we think, think we think it's a great story, mm. but we don't think it happened. Lee, <laughs> they doubt whether this is true. Is it? Well, I wasn't sure when I first read it. <laughs> Cos you know my memory nowadays, but actually that one was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show. I can reveal that Lee's team have one point <laughs> and David's team have four points. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Good night. <laughs> More lies later next Friday at 9. Press read now for a pitch invasion how the Scottish and Irish changed football on BBC iPlayer. Here, Alan's dreaming big in the bedroom. What will Amanda make of his romantic mural? Italian job next. <laughs>